When I first started my hobby for RC cars, I started with cars that are this size. This one or this one. This one, they are both the same size. This one just looks a little bit smaller because this is the buggy and this is the truggy. Uh, when I fly drones, I used to fly drones that are this size. Uh, this one is just two or three weeks old, so I just started flying drones. But I have to say, when it comes to RC, I always had a favor for smaller RC cars or drones. So my, my passion goes to cars that are this size. I think this is a 1 18th scale. Um, or when it comes to drones, I really like to have drones that are this size. Or I just got brand new with this ultra tiny drone. I can't explain why, perhaps it is because when I use them, I can use them with less fear because when I broke them, it is uh, less expensive to fix them. So I just have more fun driving, flying small, tiny RC cars and drones. To get back to the uh, theme of this video, usually I take motors that are this size in my projects, uh, like the e-skateboard I built in uh, one of my other videos. But in this video, I wanted to make a micro, mini, super tiny hovercraft. So just for comparison, so, wow, this is so just for com comparing to comparing. So just to compare the size of the motor I used in this project, I'll show you. This is the usual size of a motor I use in my projects, and this is the smallest brushless motor I found on the internet. Just take a look at the. I hope the focus can get it that close. You can see the different size. So this one is really, 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 really small. So let's start building this thing and, um, well, see if it works. The first thing you're gonna need are two ESCs for brushless motors, then of course the two brushless motors themselves. Then you're gonna need a standard receiver, I used one from Frysky from my other projects. Then some heat shrink tubes in different sizes. Then I don't know if it is available uh, in the whole world because I used some eggs that are called Kinder Überraschungsei here in Germany. Some standard receiver cables, some 2K glue, a standard Tic Tac fresh mint box. Then you're gonna need some micro JSD plugs, some ultra thin silicon cables I got from some of my other projects, a 1S LiPo battery, and finally some electrical tape. Then I printed out some parts that are made in Fusion 360. This one is the chassis, then we got the front, and finally the fin that stabilizes the hovercraft. Next step was preparing the Tic Tac box and using some 2K glue to glue the chassis to the small toy eggs I found in the Kinder Überraschungs A. I desoldered the pins from the ESCs and drilled two holes in the tic tac box. Then I threaded the cables from the brushless motor through the tic tac box. I soldered the cables from the brushless motor to the ESCs and I tinned some other pins on the ESC to get the battery connected to it. I also made a wiring plan so you can pause the video and copy it. Then I used some heat shrinks to prevent any short circuits. I mounted the two motors to the chassis. Don't worry, you will get these tiny screws when you buy the motors in the same box. And added some electrical tape to the Tic Tac box to get it sealed. I also used some silicone to seal the Tic Tac box and the cables from the motor. Finally putting everything in the Tic Tac box. Then again I used some 2K glue to mount the front of the hovercraft. I charged the LiPo batteries to make the first test run. Okay, the building is now finished, so let me give you just a very quick explanation how this thing works or is supposed to work. It's, it's really simple. Uh, so let me first plug in a battery to get this thing powered up. Okay. Now I'll just select the model I created on my, on my transmitter. It's called boat. It's not a boat, but it's a hovercraft, but it's okay. Okay, I think the battery is empty, so let me take another one. Okay, I think this should work. Okay, this one is better. Actually, I don't know why the uh, ESCs are uh, starting up separately. 
I think they should, because they are uh, solar parallel, they should st start uh, at the same moment, but I just, I just don't know. Perhaps one of you know why they start up separately. I don't know, but it's okay, they work. So um, the left stick is for the throttle, this is this one, and the right stick is for the steering. So uh, if I push the left stick, channel 1 and channel 2 on the receiver are getting activated and both motors start to turn. Okay, let's check this. Okay works okay when I now move the right stick this one a certain value is added to channel 1 or 2 you call that mixing you can set that up in your transmitter so if you push the right stick to the left a maximum of 50 out of 100 is added to the value of the right ESC because when I want the hovercraft to move to the left the right stick has to give more thrust so let's check this if I move the stick to the left the right ESC have to give more, thru more thrust. Okay, you see that? You just have to add these values in your transmitter. I'll show you that in one second. Okay, the settings in the transmitter are really simple. I'll just show you the side where the mixing is set up. So you can just copy that and put that in your transmitter. Just pause the video and copy it. It's, it's just really, it's really simple. Well, in the meantime, I made a small upgrade to the chassis to make it more stable. And to make it FPV, I printed out a small housing for the FPV camera and mounted it with some super, super tiny screws to the chassis. Okay, the building is now finished. Let's give it a test run and move out to a small lake that's nearby my house to get it a real test. Okay, we are back in my room now. Um, I have to say I'm really happy about the result. It works perfect. The only thing that could be a little bit better is the speed. I think it's really slow and I thought with those two brushless motors the speed would be a, really a bit higher than this. But what works really perfect is the steering. It moves really smooth and also the runtime uh, was higher than I expected. I thought it would run about two or two three minutes because the brushless motors are so powerful but I had a runtime for about 10 to 12 minutes so it was 
so it was really higher than I expected. This also depends on if you use the FPV camera or not. I think the FPV camera um, takes about 500 milliamps, so you can just measure it. The battery has about 450 milliamps, so the uh, FPV camera would run about one hour to uh, empty the whole LiPo battery. Well, but in the end, I'm really happy with this result. I think I'll make another one a little bit bigger and a little bit more powerful and change the um, shape of this whole hovercraft to give it a better chance to be fast. Um, but I still hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a thumbs up and um, I hope to see you in the next video. <laughs> what I forgot to say is, sorry, I just had some outtakes right now. Um, all the links and uh, all the files are down in the description below. Um, the STL file of the hovercraft you can download for free on my website and also there's a link in the description. Um, yeah, all the motors, the receivers, the, no, the, the wires, not the LiPo batteries are all in the description. Just click it and you'll get to the site where I bought it. Und ihr habt es wahrscheinlich an meinem Slang schon gehört. Ich spreche normalerweise Deutsch und nicht Englisch. Man hört das wahrscheinlich auch, es ist mehr so Schulenglisch. Ja, an die ganzen deutschen Zuschauer, vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und ich hoffe, ich sehe euch im nächsten Video.